What's up and welcome back to Nostalgia Pod, giving you another week of what's going on in pop culture. My name is Pat Sheehan, joined by my trusty co-host in his sequin vest, <laughs> sequin jumper, Dave Martin Swagger. Dave, how you doing today, man? What? Uh oh, doing good, man. Doing yeah, good. Coach Shella, 2022 weekend one in the book. We weren't yeah. there, but you can watch the live stream and pretend you were. You know, it. Uh, <laughs> it, it was funny. I. I I saw a mix of uh, people on Twitter talking about Coachella. A lot of people who were like, oh, man, you know, wish I was there. All these moments. Check this out. Check this out. Then a lot of people being like, you couldn't pay me enough to be at Coachella, especially right now with like a new COVID wave coming. Oh, uh, you know, it's it's really crowded. Like someone drew an arrow. It's like the middle of like Harry Styles crowd and was like, how much would they have to pay you to go there right now? Like how much? I was like, yeah, that doesn't seem sound that much fun. But also, you're seeing Harry Styles and Shania Twain together, which is like a what a moment. I mean, we're gonna right. talk about all that stuff in a second. So I, I just want to put a pin in that because I want to plug us first because we've been putting out some good content recently, some good reviews. Uh, we're we're making friends with uh, Camila Cabello fans all over the internet. So uh, hit that subscribe if you're watching YouTube.com/slash Nostalgia Pod. Also got a uh, Spotify and give us a five star rating on there, um, and yeah, I mean we're gonna be talking about a couple things today. We got some music, obviously. We got some TV shows back, and uh, a big installment in a franchise came out this past week, and that we're gonna be mm-hmm. talking about. But let's let's circle back to Coachella. So the Harry Styles thing. I mean, I I think everybody woke up on Saturday morning, and if you are tuned into Coachella at all, just saw videos of. Harry Styles and this performance seem to be dominating the internet. Was that the case for you as well? Yeah, definitely the first thing I saw. And interesting to take in, you know, Harry's been on or he wrapped up his arena tour within the past few months. Big blockbuster tour, big earner. Kind of interesting to see what he had in store for this. Obviously, no, the new record, Harry's House, has not yet come out. So it's kind of like a in between performance and that's what's cool about Coachella as like the lead festival every year is you expect some kind of surprise from a headliner or someone who's close to headlining in this case you get a uh, Shania Twain coming out which is a bit of a uh, closing the circle for 1D fans because there's a famous clip of Harry back when he had the long hair of course and uh, I believe Niall singing that song while playing ping pong or something and now you hear uh, him, uh, Harry and Shania duetting, man, I feel like a woman. Pretty, pretty awesome. Just because it's so, so out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely out of nowhere. Pairing, I would never have thought about putting together. However, it's also like really sweet, you know, him talking about like how Shania Twain was one of his mom's favorite artists, brought so many memories uh, to him, you know, thinking about her, uh, her mom, his mom playing her album as a kid. I thought that was great. Um, you know, also just, uh, he has sang this song with, with Casey Musgraves. Um, mm-hmm. Not 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 this one, but uh, still the one. Um, right. The, the one they, they sang sitting down with Casey Musgraves at MSG um, back in, I think it was pre-pandemics, so maybe 2018, 2019. So, it was in his repertoire. I think the only thing that really bummed me out which was uh, Shania's microphone having some technical difficulties right at the beginning. Uh, something you just cannot mess up, Coachella. A moment like that? Come on. No, that is uh, unacceptable, obviously. Uh, but yeah, still, still, still a great moment. So got did what it needed to do, got the headlines. And yeah, I think that's one of those things where like, if you're a hairy fan, you like really that was like, your motivating factor for going to Coachella. That would like really uh hit home and make you excited and, and probably satisfied that you got to experience that assuming you know you had a good experience in the pit alongside you know 200,000 other people you know it's a uh, quite the quite the uh never ending general admission so i you really have to be i think strategic in how you uh pick where you go at Coachella not that i've ever been there but just thinking of other festivals yeah, it's it definitely is one of, one of the reasons you go to festivals for something like that, and uh, definitely a moment I was I thought it was really cool and, and excited to talk about today. You know, there were a couple other moments that I really thought were worth mentioning. Um, Arcade Fire, yeah, just had this surprise, surprise set. 
Hmm. Uh, out of nowhere, they just like, we're going to come play at 545 on, I think it was Saturday. And they, they've been doing this a little bit. They uh, popped up in uh, New Orleans and M- in New York City. I don't think it was hmm. MSG, but somewhere else where they did a surprise show. So it, it was a surprise, but also one that if you were really paying attention, you probably could have probably could have put some money down on it, uh, down on and predicted. But um, I still think it was really cool. And it seems like it brought a lot of energy to uh, the, the festival when they, when they showed up and, and had the surprise set. So I thought that was really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to them having a rebound album after their last one. Everything now just kind of fell flat and we, we should be coming out in the next couple of months. Um, uh, yeah, it's actually two weeks, May 6th. Oh, only two weeks. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, RK fire right around the corner. Um, we got a couple other new songs from uh, Carly Rae Jepsen. Jamie XX dropped a single right before, and he was performing this weekend. And uh, so some some really cool, uh, you know, new, new stuff. Mm-hmm. I think Doja Cat also uh, dropped a song from the upcoming Elvis movie. Who knew that she was doing music for the Elvis movie? Uh, sure. <laughs> um, but Dave, I saw a moment you were talking about with one of a band that you really like, 100 Gex. What happened there? Oh, yeah. 100 Gex basically had their mics cut during the end of their set when they're playing money machine their most famous song and next thing you know they like turn around like dylan brady like turns around and like their gears getting like hauled off apparently it seems like throughout the day that that stage was behind and it just kind of cascaded in terms of gex is the one who got treated badly at the end there uh to make room for the next set so that's definitely uh disappointing i feel like you have to plan that around whether it's the offender just immediately gets their mics cut right at the end or you tell the next act to cut a song like just to have it boil down to the mic being cut hours later for someone whose fault it wasn't like that's just seems a bit amateur for golden voice and coachella to have something like that happen yeah i mean for for a band like gex which i mean they've definitely grown in status but are still growing and really need that spot obviously you're saving money machine as the closer and then to have it cut is just like terrible like what an awful look and something that Mm. seems amateurish like you said for them to have happen um yeah i mean what other moments stood out to you anything in particular yeah there's a few things uh you mentioned doja cat i mean she got a ton of love for that set people were saying she could she be like a headliner she definitely has the performance side of things and uh really awesome to see her crush her like that uh the ADA Rising set was really interesting. Mm. Uh I thought that was that was cool. Basically a bunch of like mini solo sets from various people on the label there, including Rich Bryan. But most surprisingly, a Coachella moment once again, you had the reunion of 21, the YG K pop girl group that went on indefinite hiatus like seven or eight years ago coming back to perform their biggest song like that's another one of those unexpected things that something like Coachella can bring you also Rockhampton performed uh the second weekend of Coachella will be their final show as a band so they say and they confirmed that they have one final album coming out in 2022 so I think the thing with Brockhampton that was a little bit like the boy who cried wolf at this point where it's like I actually need to see them like go away and be broken up before I really believe it's really happening. But nevertheless, uh, I look like that that set was pretty, pretty live as I expect from them. And I think one other thing that's Coachella related was that Travis Scott is coming back. There were billboards referencing his forthcoming album Utopia. Uh, there were billboards like telling you're going the wrong way for people going to Coachella. So it was a very tactically targeting the music industry and people attending the festival. Being like, hey, don't forget, I'm coming back at some point. So that'll be interesting to see how Travis Scott comes back, assumingly later this year. Um, yeah, obviously, given what happened with Astro World. So I think if Coachella brings a bunch of headlines, that's a that's a positive because. Uh, I feel like most of the other music festivals don't necessarily do this on like a national stage, you know, like they're just kind of like little like local pop ups at this point. But Coachella, because it's the first one and because there's more opportunity for like Shania Twain to show up at Harry, for example, like because that can happen at Coachella, I feel like it still makes a lot of noise on weekend one. 
Yeah, no, uh, Coachella always brings something interesting. One of the moments I wanted to just shout out real quick was Danny Elfman having just like <laughs> one of the most talked about sets of the weekend. He brought out some of the members of Limp Biscuit with a huge orchestra. Billy Eilish showed up at one point. He was playing songs from his former band, songs from the, all the uh, the scores and, and songs he's written for TV and, and movies. And just like that, that's one of the things you can only see at a, at a festival like Coachella or Bonnaroo or something like that, where it's just like huge and you get these big, really produced moments because man, if you had told me, like, you're going to have all these people and Danny Elfman will be one of the most talked about sets of the weekend, like, you just <laughs> really can't plan for something like that. Um, yeah, and, you know, with uh, with Kanye dropping out uh, mm-hmm. a few uh, weeks before, but I think it was three or four weeks before, they were scrambling a bit to get a headliner, and Sweet House Mafia was already uh, set to play, and the weekend played with them, and it seems like they actually got a uh, tepid response. You know, it is also important to note that they were the closing headliner uh the weekend with swedish house mafia so uh it was a bit disappointing to see you know the, some <laughs> videos of the weekend being like you guys want me to end this set right now and things like that but uh you know i think it's also three days in, in the hot california sun and you know a lot of uh energy and alcohol and drugs consumed yep. so uh not always gonna get the most energy at the closing act but that's okay 